This is Dr. J. Welcome to Thesis in 101, where you should be finishing your degree, but your degree is in fact finishing you. Today we are focusing on how to read academic papers efficiently. Let's get right into it. To successfully contribute to knowledge, which is the purpose of doing research, we must first invest in understanding what is already published. And this comes at a steep price of mostly reading academic articles. While tips and tricks on how to read academic papers faster may save you a couple of minutes, being strategic about what papers to read will save you weeks. In this tutorial, I'll focus on both aspects, starting with the biggest time saver, which is identifying the most relevant papers. For this, we will apply a version of the Pareto Principle, or the 80-20 rule. As an 80% of the literature relevant to your topic will come from a select few papers, which I will refer to as key papers, and the rest of what you need to know will be scattered through like a hundred other supporting papers. Meaning not all papers are equal, and as a result does not require an equal amount of investment. To identify which papers we want to invest our time in, we have to do some screening. In this phase, we first check out the title. This is usually a good indication of whether the paper is related to your study. Then, check out the abstract. A well-written abstract contains a wealth of information. The problem, purpose, method, findings, and value. The value gives you an indication of how this particular paper contributes to literature. Only if the abstract shows potential, download the paper into a central space. If this turns out to be a key paper, you want to be able to find it easily as you will return to it quite a few times over the course of you conducting your research. There are many tools to help you with organizing your papers, and I strongly suggest that you do get a tool. I prefer using Mendeley because it is free, easy to install, easy to use, and it makes finding things and referencing a breeze. Next we read the introduction. This provides you with a little bit more background, why the research was important, how this paper contributes to literature, and also the game plan for the rest of the paper so that the reader knows what to expect. Next up is major section headings and the first paragraph thereof. If it is a good author, they will highlight the importance of a major theme in that very first paragraph. Since this is just the screening phase, I usually skip anything after that opening section because that typically would just be additional information and examples. If this turns out to be a key paper, reading the rest will be very valuable, but for now we are still just screening. Once you've gotten the gist of the major section headings, quickly check out the sub-themes and sub-sub-themes because good authors will summarize these themes by using very descriptive headings. At this point, you don't have to bother reading the paragraphs underneath. I recommend you skip the method section of the paper altogether because if you've read the abstract and the introduction, you will have a good view of the methods that the author used. The only times you would want to pay special attention to the method section is if you would like to replicate the study or repurpose the method or research instruments for somewhat similar study. Skim through graphs, tables, figures and formula because those are great ways to get the gist of what the author is saying in a quick and efficient manner. Then of course, the conclusion. Once you have a feel for how relevant the paper is, mark it in your tool as such. In Mendeley, I just use the star feature if it is a key paper and leave the rest blank, indicating that the rest are supporting papers. At this stage, summarize the supporting papers in one sentence and add keywords. I'm not referring to the keywords the authors used, but keywords that are specific to your study that relates to the paper. And in most cases, it will just be one or two keywords because after all, these are supporting papers. In total, this phase can take anything from 2 to 15 minutes per paper, depending on how well you know your topic already or how skilled you are at academic reading. I usually do phase 1 in a batch and can get through about 15 papers in 20 minutes because this is a skill that I've built over many years. So don't get discouraged if it takes you a little bit longer. You will notice that the more you do this, the easier it becomes. Now that we have differentiated between key papers and supporting papers, we can invest our time strategically. Always start with the key papers. You absolutely do not have to read the entire paper to extract value from it. As much as we were strategic about what papers to invest our time in, we also have to be clever around what parts of the paper we read. Since we have done phase one for a bunch of papers, we now need to reread the title, abstract, and introduction in phase two because the two phases could be hours apart. 
If you are already well versed in your topic, you can do a keyword search through the background and read only the paragraphs or sections related to those keywords. Just make sure you check out the headings so that you can be certain of where this bit of information fits in. If the topic is very new to you, it would be beneficial to read this in a little bit more detail. After a while, you will notice that the background and introduction in related papers are starting to sound the same. Once you have noticed that pattern, you can adopt the keyword search method. Again, skip the method section unless it is something you want to repurpose. Then pay special attention to graphs, tables, figures, and formula we previously just skimmed through. These are great summaries of what the author is trying to convey and it helps you with your understanding of the subject. Read the findings, limitations, and conclusion in detail. Since these are key papers, skimming is unadvisable because most of the claims in your study will be based on these articles and for that reason you really need to be sure of what the author is saying. Also this provides you with the author's point of view on the phenomenon and this will help you with finding your own voice for when you have to give your point of view in your thesis or dissertation. The limitations section is quite interesting because it can shape how you need to position your work so that it is clear on how you are contributing to knowledge. And it is also a great source of potential barriers or hurdles that you need to look out for in your study. If it is a supporting paper, it is even easier to get through. But before I show you how to read a supporting paper, I just want to share a bonus tip. Read the supporting paper only once you've read quite a number of key papers. When we are new to a subject, we miss quite a few connections between ideas and concepts. This means you may have incorrectly classified an article as a supporting paper because at the time of screening, your knowledge on the subject was sparse and you couldn't recognize the article's importance. The frequency of incorrectly classifying papers will drastically decrease over time the more familiar you become with your subject. Back to reading tips. Again, start with the title, abstract, and introduction. Remember those keywords you wrote in your summary? Well, in the supporting papers, you can pretty much just do a keyword search and read those sections related to these words very well. This goes for background, figures, tables, and findings. Since most of the paper will be irrelevant, focus only on the bits that you can extract value from. Read the limitations and the conclusion in detail, as this is a way to validate the bits and pieces you are extracting. And just a reminder, if at any stage a supporting paper is elevated to a key paper, this method will no longer be sufficient, so you'll have to read it in a little bit more detail. And that is it for a supporting paper. As a researcher who has done this for a very, very long time, I can tell you with absolute certainty that there are no shortcuts when it comes to improving your knowledge on a subject you are meant to create knowledge on. When I was a master's student, it took me ages to get through a paper and someone gave me the advice to just read the introduction and the conclusion and I'll be fine. Yeah, I wasn't fine. And neither are any of the students I supervised that somehow got the same advice. If it is a key paper, you are better off making the investment. Do not shortchange yourself because it is a little bit hard, especially in the beginning. This will become easier. And that's it for me today. If you have comments or questions, just pop them into the comment section. I love interacting with you guys that way. Like this, share this, subscribe to this. This is Dr. J, signing off.